Hey, my tour people. Mr. Sam here. I'm bringing you our week five of our summer program. And what is it? That's right, our UP. I'm here to introduce all of our fun facts for the Peninsula. Brought to you, of course, by myself, Ms. Ash, Ms. Kelly, Ms. Angie, Mr. Eric, and of course, Mr. Terrence. Now, without further ado, I bring you Mr. Sam. Hello, my Torrent people. This is Mr. Sam here, and I bring you your historic facts for week five of our summer program, which is the UP, or as we know it as the Upper Peninsula. I have a special guest today, my daughter, Jenna. Say hello to our Torrent people. Hello. Yep. Now, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. And of course, when we think about the UP, we think about money. And of course, all the natural resources that we were able to use and it created a fabulous economy. Uh-oh, I've got a lot of screens that need to be moved around. But all right, so now we're looking at our historic facts. Now, think about back in week two when I talked about the Great Toledo War that, that took place back in 1835 to 1836. We were able to acquire 80% of what we now call as the Upper Peninsula because of that deal. We gave up that little Toledo Strip. And we got that. And of course, at that time, back in 1836, like, we got a whole bunch of useless land. Back before they had Mackinac Bridge, so you had to get there either by going through Wisconsin all around or going across the Straits of Mackinac. But as you can see, I'm going to zoom in so we can, so everyone can see this a little bit better. Back in 1841, they discovered copper up in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, then, no, not, not paintbrushes. They already had those. But then in 1844, they discovered iron ore. And of course, boom, huge mining industry. We had a massive copper copper vein that ran down the, the Keweenaw Peninsula. And of course, it was booming. We're talking money, money, money from all those mines. But if we sign down, of course, if you, if you click on these links, <laughs> they will take you in there and you'll be able to get a little more information. But of course, you can see all this happened in the mid-1800s. We slide down a little bit. Well. By the 1960s, the last copper mine of the Peninsula closed. Now, that is copper mine, okay? That's where the big money was coming from. But we also had iron ore that was still being mined. I believe the last one is in, I, was, I believe, Muskegon, and it's still maybe operating. Okay? And you'll be able to click on that link and find out all that information. And, of course, something that's absolutely extraordinary that was spawned off of this was the Sioux Locks. Now the Sioux Locks, that is located in Sault Ste. Marie, there's a section where the Great Lakes connect, where our Lake, uh, Lake Superior, which is our largest Great Lake, connects with Lake Huron. Well, Lake Superior flows down into Lake Huron. Seems like a pretty good deal. You can take ships through there, but there's a 21-foot drop-off from Lake Superior to Lake Huron. So if you run some of those big ships through, well, they're going to sink, and sadly, we do have some shipwrecks around there. But in 1855, they decided to change that and create these two locks. So they made these locks, which were able to safely transport ships. Now, of course, they updated these locks throughout the time. And we can click on this and take a quick look. But they have updated these locks throughout, throughout time to accommodate our larger freighters, which can get up to like 300 feet in length, as you can see. Massive! Okay? And then, of course, it is, as I look at my notes, yes, that is the busiest lock in the world, and it is also the largest lock in the Western Hemisphere. Wow, that's historic. Historically busy, historically large. Also, little paintbrushes. Yes, little paintbrushes. All right. And then, of course, we bring on, jumping from our suit locks to... Sault Ste. Marie, which is where our Sioux Locks are located, Sault Ste. Marie is our oldest city in the state of Michigan. Okay, and that was established back in 1668. Um, of course, that also makes Sault Ste. Marie one of the oldest cities in the United States, at least in the top 50 of oh, that, uh, next to Massachusetts and Connecticut, all their cities that were being spawned up. And of course, to bring a little bit more attention to our Upper Peninsula, the Upper Peninsula is home to Dickerson County, which was the last county to be established in the state of Michigan. 
which it was established back in 1891. Now, looking at my notes, Dickerson County was formed from parts of Marquette, Not Menominee, and Iron Counties. Okay? So, hopefully you found, and of course, at the very bottom, historic lumber industry. This goes right along with the mining industry. Of course, when they had to clear out, of course, when they had to clear out all of those areas to create those mines and towns, they were lumbering. And of course, a huge fact when you think about uh, Michigan's lumber history, they created enough board feet to where they could cover the entire upper and lower peninsula. We got the lower and upper peninsula with a wooden floor. That's how much wood we produce. Okay, amazing. All right, now look, I look forward to seeing everyone on Wednesday for our live activity. And of course, look for my video activity coming up on this Thursday. Okay, we'll jump out of this screen real quick. I'm Mr. Sam again. Have a great day. Would you like to say bye? To all the bye. Bye. See y'all later. Hey guys, um, we are back this week with UP Week, and it is one of my most favorite places in Michigan. Um, today we are going to talk about the community connections for the UP, and we're going to start with Northern Transitions. Northern Transitions provides evaluation, supported employment, community placement, and job site placement for people living in the UP. One of the really cool things about their website is um, they talk about their job placements and the amount of money that their clients make at these facilities that they're working at. And it's really cool because a lot of them were above minimum wage, which doesn't always happen. So that was very cool to see. Um, they do have a recycling program as one of their jobs. The next connection we're going to talk about is Uber Service Dogs. So they educate and assist businesses in how to respond to service animals being in their facility and how to make their facility accessible to um, people or handlers and their service dogs. They assist the handlers in training and working with their animals and if they have any issues. And they also are willing to work with anybody else in the community with service dogs or teach them about service dogs. The last place we're going to talk about is the adult learning systems, and they provide um, small group homes, so they are a group home facility, but they also do respite programs, and they have a supported independence program for individuals to access the community, which basically means they work with clients to um, access different things in the community, such as leisure things or grocery shopping or all sorts of different things that allow them to live their best life. So for local CMH in the UP, there are quite a few of them. I was pretty shocked. I feared there would only be two or three for the whole UP, but there are um, five of them. And they do share counties for the most part, unlike in our area, which they do have a lot of individual ones. Iron and Jabojak are the only two counties in the UP that have their own systems. So for therapeutic services, again, music therapy had no listed therapists. I looked on the music therapist website for the state of Michigan and I did not see any. I did a Google search and didn't see any. So that's something that's really missing out in our northern part of the state. And I hope that's something that changes soon. And um, if you, again, know of anybody who's going into music therapy, this would be great to advocate for them to get them up in the northern part of the state because it would be nice if all members of our state had access to that type of service. So for equine or hippotherapy, there was Willow Farm Therapeutic Riding in Marquette. They were the only um, riding center in the Northern Michigan that specifically said they were therapeutic riding. There were a couple other ones that mentioned it in their Facebook pages, um, but they did not have it on their website as an actual provided service. So you might have to bring your own therapist. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> However, in the UP, there are so many cool places to ride. Um, you can go trail riding and wrenching horses, including Mackinac Island, which is a ton of fun. They are even places where you can go for wagon rides or driving horses, which means you can be the person that guides them in the wagon. So for our last section, it's our sensory friendly activities. So Moosewood Nature Center in Marquette is the first place or the first nature center in the UP that is designed to be sensory friendly. And they work with the families of their participants to make sure that their materials are as accessible as possible. And they help um, 
individuals explore nature while keeping in mind socio or social and educational and sensory preferences of all members of their community. And they do a lot of things with arts and crafts, outdoor discovery and reading for the most part right now. The next one is Northern Michigan University, the Forrest Roberts Theater in Marquette, and they do sensory friendly performances for quite a few of their shows throughout the year. Um, and they not only do um, theatrical performances, they do musicals and plays, and they even do ballet performances. And they have a great website that tells you what shows they're doing on what dates that are sensory friendly. And they have an area that is also a quiet space if the show still is too overwhelming, even with um, sensory modifications. The last um, sensory friendly place is the Superior Arts Youth Theater. And they do adaptive performances and activities. So if you wanna be a part of a theater, but traditional theater is a little too overwhelming for you. They do adaptive performances and activities that make it so every person can be a part of their performances. And it's very cool. So just as a reminder for this week, as we look at our summer calendar, Wednesday the 15th is our Wednesday live, our next session. Um, the link is the same link as always. And this week is water. So it's on the water themed. So when you join us this week, make sure you have water with you in some way, shape or form. You can have a glass of water. You can sit in a kiddie pool outside. You can be running through a sprinkler. You could be on a boat in the water. We are excited and we just want to see how you use summer or use water in your summer hangouts. So looking forward to talking to you guys on Wednesday. See you soon. Hi, Torrent. Um, so this week we're talking about the Upper Peninsula. And so I have the opportunity um, to share with you again um, the attractions of the Upper Peninsula. Um, so I took the ones that I thought were most um, visited, maybe, um, and um, shared them with you. Um, my family and I have just spent a couple weeks up there um, in the beginning of, or actually at the end of uh, June, beginning of July, and uh, so we actually made some of these trips to some of these attractions as well. The first one I want to start out with is Tequamanon Falls. If you've never been there, it's actually a beautiful place to go. You can get into um, the falls and swim if it's a hot day. Um, so click on that link and you can find out more about it. Um, there are camping sites there if you uh, love to camp. Um, you can rent boats to go from the lower falls to the upper falls. Um, and that's what you see right here. Um, and you can click on that to watch that video. Um, so a lot of things to do. Um, uh, at the Tequamanon Fall State Park. We decided um, not to get into the water this time, but we hiked um, until the mosquitoes pretty much ate us alive and then we turned around. Um, and the second place we went to was the Sulax. Um, and this is a fun trip um, if you see some ships go through. Um, if not, um, you can read the fun facts or you can read the history behind it, which Mr. Sam um, did some history uh, this week about the Sulux, so you can read that. Um, and uh, we were able to see a, a, a ship or a barge, um, and so that was fun. Um, so. I will talk about this more on Thursday as well um, because I have some video footage of uh, the barge that came through uh, on the day that we were there. Um, so be looking for that. Um, also, um, Picture Drocks. I haven't had the opportunity to get there yet, but that's a munising and I would love to do that. Um, it's beautiful. You can take uh, boat rides, uh, a boat cruise around there um, to see the breathtaking views. You can also uh, rent kayaks um, to go around and um, kind of see the views for the day. Um, so that is a munising. Um, 
So check out that if you're ever um, in the Upper Peninsula or in Munising. Uh, Kitchikippi Springs um, is just outside Manistique. And um, I have never been there. It is on my bucket list to go uh, visit, but I know Miss Ashley has been there. Um, and uh, as it says right here, it's 16,000 gallons of crystal clear water um, that the spring pushes in. Uh, so something I would love to see, I would love to take my family to. We've been up there several times, but just have never had the chance to go to go visit. Um, Oswald Bear, Oswald Bear Ranch, one of my favorite things, um, places to, to visit. Um, and I will be uh, doing a little bit more on this on Thursday as well. Um, so I won't tell you a little, a lot about this uh, ranch um, until Thursday. But um, when we were there just this past early July, um, we were able to see a lot of the bears. Um, roaming around, they were very active. So this is just a really, really fun place uh, to visit with your kids. Um, and uh, Mr. Oswald is very, um, he shares so much. He sits out there and, and just um, waits for questions, answers them, and Mrs. Oswald does the same. So a um, very fun place to visit. Um, and you can feed the bears, uh, and, and so that's really fun too. Um, the Asaba Point Lighthouse, um, you know, Michigan is, is full of lighthouses, so this is just one that is on Lake Superior. Um, right here, uh, this link right here shows you um, all of the lighthouses in the Upper Peninsula, some that are active and some that are not. So um, if you click on this link, it will take you to, um, or it will show you the map, and then it will give you um, the information about the ones that are and the ones that are not. Um, Copper Harbor, I was here when I was uh, just a little girl, um, and that's the, highest point um, in Michigan uh, in the UP. So beautiful, breathtaking scenes. Um, if you've never been there and are taking a trip up uh, up that way, it's, it's worth a drive. Um, so a lot of people like to visit, uh, visit there. Uh, Mackinac Island, of course, um, either to pick up the ferry from St. Ignace or to pick up the ferry uh, from Mackinac City. Um, but just a fun place to visit. You could stay the night. Uh, there are hotels on the island. Um, you can ride your bike around the island. You can um, do the horse and carriage ride. Um, there's a butterfly house on the island. So many fun things that you can do as a family. Um, and just, you could take a vacation there, actually. Um, so these are just the top places that I thought of um, and that I researched, um, but so many other places. The Upper Peninsula is just full of nature, um, full of all kinds of little uh, hidden gems. So um, on Thursday, we'll talk about, uh, we'll go more into depth on Oswald's Bear Ranch and the Sulax. Can't wait to see you. Bye. Everybody, it's Terrence from 3.6. I hope you had an amazing weekend. We're back this week with week number five. One, two, three, four, five. Week five, we're going to look at restaurants in the Upper Peninsula area. And I'll be honest with you, I've not really been up there. I've been across the bridge just a little bit over to uh, not Mackinac City. That's on the Lower Peninsula side, uh, St. Ignace. But up to St. Ignace area, and that's it. And then I've taken that uh, the ferry from there on over to Mackinac Island. Got a little bit of fudge and some things like that got out of there and headed back south so I have not been up there but uh in a few weeks I will be heading on up uh 
and checking out a little bit more of the UP. Get a little further in, nothing too crazy though. Going to visit some friends at their cottage. So anyways, let's look at week five restaurants for the Upper Peninsula area and see what kind of amazing eats we can find if we're traveling up there ourselves. First, we'll find ourselves in Munising. Okay, we can stop at the Fish Basket. If seafood is your thing, the Fish Basket is the place to go. And it looks like they have a good assortment of fish there. So the one thing I recommend is the fish. And if you don't like fish, you can try the fish. Okay, but there you have some other things in there. I see some shrimp down here. Get yourself a little cocktail sauce. I love that. I love me some cocktail sauce. So the Fish Basket in Munising. While you're in Munising, if fancy dining is your thing, you can swing on by Tracy's and get yourself some pan-seared salmon if seafood is your thing, or try their steak if you like getting away from the water foods like fish. Okay, nice steak over here. Get yourself a little baked potato, sour cream, some asparagus, I love that. So healthy for you. Tracy's in Munising for some fine dining. While you're in Munising, if you prefer, just get yourself some pizza. You can swing on by Pictured Rocks Pizza and pick yourself up some pizza. And while you're there, you can have a slice by the water, stare out at the water, maybe catch yourself some fish, take it home and cook it. They also have, specialize in garlic bread, as most pizzerias do, but they look like they have a pretty good pizza out of everything I've seen around there. If you find yourself in the Copper Harbor, the very tip of the Upper Peninsula, and you are in for some fine dining, stop by the Harbor Haas Restaurant. I recommend the pan-seared salmon right here. Looks amazing. Or you can treat yourself to some shrimp and grits, something I eat frequently when I visit the South, especially places like Charleston, South Carolina. I love me some shrimp and grits. So. This looks pretty good, a little different than what I'm used to, but good nonetheless. If you find yourself in the Marquette area of the Upper Peninsula, swing by Lagniape Cajun Creole Eatery. That's where you'll find me if I'm up there because I love me some Louisiana cooking and they specialize in gumbo, jambalaya, and all things Cajun or Creole. So I will definitely be putting that one in my pocket of places to swing by when I'm in the UP. Love me some Cajun and Creole New Orleans, Louisiana cooking food. So the problem is I've been to uh, New Orleans so many times, eat down there frequently, they got, they got a, a good game to live up to. If you find yourself in the lower part of the Upper Peninsula in Escanaba and you're looking for some finer dining, you can swing through the Stone House they specialize in walleye, which is a very good fish to eat. And they make a mean steak by the looks of it and from the reviews that I read. If you find yourself over in Bruce Crossing, a little closer towards the uh, Wisconsin border there. Uh, or is it Minnesota? Oh my gosh. It's Minnesota. Um, swing on by Char's Cafe and they look like they make a mean dutch apple pie and i'm not one for sandwiches like rubens because the ones i've had frequently are not that great but this one actually looks good and i like the nice blonde fries so nice place to stop by char's cafe get yourself a nice little sandwich and you always got to finish off a little dessert if you find yourself in Wetmore, I've never heard of Wetmore until I was doing some research for this. You can swing on through the Camel Riders Restaurant and Resort. And they recommend, and I would recommend by looking at all the pictures and reviews I read on this place, steak. Steak, they make, it looks like they make a really good steak. I prefer mine a little less done than this. Nice little medium there. I like, I'd like to see a little more, a little more blood in my steak. And if you find yourself in Manistique, you can swing on by the Upper Crust Cafe, Bakery, and Deli. And they make some mean crepes by the looks of the reviews online and all the pictures I was looking at. And they specialize in either sweet or savory crepes. So 
savory would be more of a dessert or a, I'm sorry, sweet would be more of a dessert one and savory would be maybe you have something more like a little chicken in it or some kind of protein or something. I like a mix of both personally. Uh, they also specialize in breakfast and I saw their uh, this breakfast croissant, that flaky croissant right there looked so good. So good. I, I'm tempted to drive up there just for that. If you're heading either on your way through the UP to trek out more of the west side of, this, of that state, or you're coming back to the Lower Peninsula and you find yourself driving through Newberry, you can stop by the Woodland Grill and pick yourself up a Portobello wrap. If you want to stay a little more on the healthier side, and I have eaten some Portobello wraps and they are tasty. Uh, they also specialize in some fresh caught fish and chips. Chips meaning french fries, not potato chips, but those will do too. And that is it for the restaurants of week number five in the Upper Peninsula. If you find yourself up there, try and stop by one of these amazing stops. Get yourself some to eat. Take some pictures, please, of your own. Send some food back. And even if you don't stop at any one of these places, you find yourself somewhere else out there in Michigan or uh, anywhere else, please share some pictures of the food you've been eating. I know I've been taking some photos. And uh, when I drive up there, I'll take some photos of my food and share with you what we've been eating. So everybody, enjoy your week and check out the Upper Peninsula. All right. Enjoy the day. Hi friends, Miss Connie here. Before we get started tonight, I just want to let you know that I'm having some technical difficulties, so I'm not going to be able to visit the links, but I hope you take time to click on them and see the videos and see some of the beautiful pictures of what our Upper Peninsula looks like. And know that the lighting is also an issue, and so there's nothing I can do to lighten my screen. Um, but I think we can do this anyway. So let's talk about the regional features of the Upper Peninsula and about Lake Superior. We're going to start out by talking about Lake Superior. Lake Superior is the largest of the Great Lakes, not only in size, but in how deep it is, and it's our coldest. It has been called many different names throughout our history, and some of them are listed in this article. And there have been many beautiful pictures taken of this lake. However, Lake Superior has a history of very strong storms and winds and has caused many ships to sink. One of the most famous and the one I'm sure you have all heard of is the Edmund Fitzgerald. Even has a song and a movie about it. There is a museum called Whitefish Point that talks about the Great Lake shipwrecks. I had the opportunity to go to this museum with my family many years ago and it was very interesting about how many ships have sunk in Lake Superior. And also the museum talks about the lighthouses that you will find throughout the Upper Peninsula. So if you click right here, you can go on a virtual tour, or you can watch a video, of Lake Superior, its sites, its history, and many of the attractions or things that people like to visit when they're there. Now, we're going to back up here because the Upper Peninsula has 15 different counties, and those counties are listed for you right here. In those 15 different counties, you are going to find over 4,300 inland lakes. The biggest being Lake Gogebik, which my family got to go fishing there many years ago. If you don't like to fish, it is a beautiful area, well worth the time it takes to get there. Also, what's unique about the Upper Peninsula is it touches three of the Great Lakes. It is surrounded by Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and Lake Huron. If you click right here, 
This is going to show you a map of the Upper Peninsula, where the 15 counties are located, and within those counties where each of the 4,300 lakes can be found with some information about each of those lakes. Another interesting feature of the Upper Peninsula is the 40 lighthouses. Some of these lighthouses are still functional. Some are open to the public for tours and others have been bought by individuals that have turned them into bread and breakfasts. It's like a hotel, only it's like staying in someone's house if you've never been to a bread and, oh, I can't talk tonight, if you've never been to a bed and breakfast before. If you click right here, you will see pictures of the 40 lighthouses and find out other interesting facts about the lighthouses. The state of Michigan has five national parks. Three of those five are all located in the UP. If you click here, it's going to tell you about all five of the national parks. But these are the three we want to focus on this week. The Isle Royal National Park. So again, if you click on the orange, it's going to take you to that park. You can see some of the pictures of the park and the things that you can do there. But what's very unique about Isle Royal National Park is that of all the national parks in the country, this one has the least or the smallest number of visitors. And the reason for that is because it's so hard to get there. It's so far back into the woods in a remote area that it has fewer visitors in an entire year than Yosemite National Park has in a single day. Pitchard Rocks is National Lakeshore Park is located in the UP. My family got to do that also a few years ago. We went on a boat ride. It's well worth the time. You click here, it'll show you again pictures and videos of that park. And the Kianaw National Historical Park. And again, click here and you can go to that park. Along with the three national parks found in the UP, you will find 22 state parks. If you click here, it'll show you all of them. Or you can go by county. So in each county you'll see listed is the name of the state park. And again, if you click on the name, it'll take you to that park's website so you can see pictures and find out what you can do there. And if you count each one of these, you're going to count 22 different parks. And again, they're listed by county. So we're going to scroll down. Just let you, there's Gogebeek that I talked about a few minutes ago. Porcupine Mountains is another one you'll hear people talk a lot about. So I hope you'll take time and visit some of those websites. Our state gem is called the Isle Royal Greenstone, and it is only found in the Upper Peninsula. This is what it looks like in its raw state. Some people say if you actually get to see it. It's very rare, but if you do, that it really looks more grayish and more like the gravel that you see in our driveways. But people take it, shine it up, polish it, and as you can see in this picture, it has the pattern that you would find like on the back of a turtle shawl. And you can see that it's used to make jewelry, necklaces, earrings, rings, things of that nature. But it is now illegal for you to find a piece and keep it. You can look when you're in um, Isle Royal. You can look for the green stone. But if you find one, you're supposed to leave it there. So this talks a little bit about what it is and how you find it. I've never seen a real one. 
only thing I've ever seen is the jewelry that's been made out of it. But again, the state gem is the Isle Royal Greenstone. Native plants that you find in the UP are the Michigan Lily, the Canadian Mayflower, the Jack in the Pulpit, the Snowy Lady Slipper, Blued Eye Grass. There are many more that you can find in the UP. And if you click right here is a list of other native plants found in the UP along with pictures of them. Wildlife in the UP, you have the moose, the tricolored bat, the fox snake, the wolf, the bobcat, the black bear, and the prairie chicken. The ones that you see written in blue, they're blue because the only place in our state that you can see a moose or see a prairie chicken is in the UP. Wolves have now crossed over the bridge. They didn't really walk across the bridge, but wolves are now being able to find in the upper lower peninsula. And then black bears you can see in some counties of the lower uh, Michigan. But again, the moose and the prairie chicken are only found in the UP. If you click here, you can listen to the noise that a prairie chicken makes. And if you click here, you can watch a video of someone who was on vacation in the UP and they had their movie camera out and they saw a moose and so they videotaped it. Information about farms in the UP was very difficult to find. The only number that I could find were for dairy farms. And it was very interesting that 30 years ago, way before most of you were born, that there were over 250 dairy farms in the UP. But as of today, there are only 69 dairy farms. Dairy farms are farms that raise, we call them dairy cows, or cows that produce milk. And they sell the milk for you and I to drink or to companies to make ice cream and yogurt and cheese. I did find out, though, that in the UP, there are some farms that raise cattle for meat, sheep, goats, and pigs. The other thing I found out about farms is that they grow corn, oats, soybeans, potatoes, and hay. On Thursday, when we meet again, we are going to do a special project, excuse me, using potatoes. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday and teaching you about something that you find in the UP that has potatoes in it.